Hey everyone, welcome back to Black Culture Talks. If it's your first time, welcome to Black Culture Talks. Here we talk all things wellness, travel, and finances. And today we're just gonna get into it. We have a special guest, the guru of taxes, Mr. Cedric from It's Tax Season in New York. Um, it's Tax Season is a professional LLC that has been in business for over 17 years, helping us, the community, the culture, make sure we take advantage of all the tax advantages, excuse me, take advantage of all the tax codes and get, get our money or pay less in taxes. And so today I thought it was very important for many of you, you know, tax season began a few weeks ago on January 23rd and people are wondering what's different. It with um, tax season 2022 versus tax season 20, excuse me, is it 2022, Cedric, or tax season 2023? Tax tax season, tax year 2022, tax okay. year 2022. Thank you for that. So there are some things that have changed. Sure. The news has been talking about how this year many people are going to see less in refunds, and there's five main reasons why. Um, we're going to have Cedric walk us through, but in addition to him walking us through some of the changes that will negatively affect our returns, he's also going to give us a couple of uh, hacks and tips and solutions on how to help keep our money, get all our money. And so without further ado, Cedric, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate appreciate your time. I know it's a busy, busy time for you. So I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to talk to Black Culture um, Talks <laughs> all about taxes. So welcome to the family. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Kim. Um, just a couple of things for tax year 2022. Um, a lot of people are going to see a decrease in um, refunds um, compared to tax year of 2021. And um, the main reason is during the pandemic, um, the government um, passed a law called the American Rescue Plan. And in the American Rescue Plan, there was a lot of changes to the tax law to um, provide um, assistance to the American taxpayer. And in tax year 2022, a lot of those enhancements in the tax law um, that allow people to get larger refunds have sunset. So they are no longer uh, um, in tax law. So first, let me just say this. Uh, when you talk about tax credit, a tax credit is something that reduces your, is a dollar for dollar reduction on your tax liability. So to make it simple, if you if uh if you do your taxes in um, at the end of getting your, your taxes done, say you, it's a, I'm just throwing a random number, you owe a hundred dollars, right? And that's without your, your credits. And then you have say $10 worth of credits. Um, that a hundred dollars they say you owe will go down to um, 90. A tax credit is a dollar for dollar reduction on your tax liability. So um, in 2022, um, you know, some things uh, sunset that was in the tax law um, in tax year 2021 and um, prior to that. So the, one of the main things is the child tax credit. Um, the child tax credit was there prior to 2022. Um, um, but what happened was in 2021 from the American Rescue Plan, they enhanced it. It was called an enhanced child tax credit. So um, people was getting more from the child tax credit than they was doing in other tax years previously. And that tax credit, that enhanced part of the child tax credit has sunset. Um, so it's no longer there in 2022. So that enhancement being um, with that enhancement being gone, that will cause um, you to get a less refund. Um, like I said, a tax credit, a tax credit, when you hear tax credit, a tax credit is a dollar for dollar reduction on your tax liability. It's a dollar for dollar reduction on your tax liability. 
So that was one thing. The enhanced child tax credit has sunset and the child tax credit went back to its normal levels before um, the American Rescue Plan. Two, the child dependent care credit is another credit that's been there. People who have children and pay for daycare. Um, um, that is a deduction or, that you get and it comes in the form of a credit. In the American Rescue Plan, they increased that credit as well for each child um, up to a maximum. They increased the child uh, dependent care credit in the American Rescue Plan. That also sunsetted in tax year 2021 so in 2022 you'll still receive the dependent care credit if you have children that you pay um daycare um expenses for but it's just not as much as it was it, it, it went back to the um same levels that it was prior to tax year 2021 okay number three is the earned income credit um, the earned income credit is something that um, the government um, put in the tax law to help low income earners. Um, there's a maximum amount of um, income you can have um, to receive the earned income credit. Um, if you have one child, that max goes up. If you have two children, that max goes up as well. In the American Rescue Plan, they also enhance the earned income credit um where you was getting more um of that credit as well than you were in prior years that also sunset in tax year 2021 um the fourth thing is charitable deductions so um let me explain this a little bit i know if, um as tax filers you might have heard of doing a short form or a long form where you itemize your deductions as a tax filer there's four different filing statuses that's single head of household, married filing jointly, and married filing separately. For each one of those filing statuses, you get what you call a standard deduction. For a single tax filer, the standard deduction is $12,950. So you get that automatically as a tax filer, everybody who files, if you're a single filer. If you have deductions that exceed that $12,950 as a single tax filer, you file what they call a long form or you itemize your deductions. So what happened in the American Rescue Plan, so like I said, in the standard deduction, you get $12,950. For you to itemize, your deductions had to be above the $12,950, right? So deductions are stuff like charitable contributions, which is, I'm going to touch on this, is um, mortgage interest, um, job expense, property tax, things of that nature. With charitable deductions, all that stuff, again, like I said, had to add up to exceed $12,950 for it to be beneficial to you, or you would just get the $12,950. What they did in the American Rescue Plan was, even if you was just, um, if you just had the twelve thousand nine fifty as a um, single filer, and you made a five hundred dollar um, charitable contribution, even if you had no other deductions, you could take that five hundred dollar charitable contribution and put it on top of your standard deduction. They call it above the line deduction, which means your twelve thousand nine hundred fifty would have went to thirteen thousand four fifty deduction because you was able to just take the charitable deduction um charitable contribution deduction and add it to your standard deduction um so that also has sunset after tax year 2021 now it's back to you get the 12,950 standard but if you itemize and have more deduction um deductions that total more than 12,950 whatever that total be that would be your deduction and the, and the deduction, real quickly, this, your deduction is dedu is deducted from your income. Um, and that, when you just um, subtract your deduction from your income, it gives you what they call your adjusted gross income. And you're, you're taxed based on that, your adjusted gross income. Not what you make, 
but based on your adjusted gross income, which is your income um, um, minus adjustments and all that. Oh, and lastly, um, a lot of people lost their jobs um, or was laid off or whatever um, during the pandemic and after pandemic. And uh, in those situations, a lot of times an employee will pay you severance pay, you know, that comes in a lump sum. And um, so just to be clear, when you get a lump sum payment for severance, that severance, that is taxable income. So you you will receive um depending on your company and how it's paid out you'll get a w-2 or 1099 um for that usually separate from regular wages and you have to report that income um when you do your taxes because it's taxable income and if you don't report it um at some point you'll get a bill from the irs or they will calculate for you how much that they should uh receive um from that severance income um so it's good to get in there with your taxes so all your adjustments and your credits and deductions is in, is um um utilized against that income because if if you don't include it when the, the irs or the state get it they say okay they see you got a severance for say fifty thousand. you owe us all for this they just going to do the straight um percentage of that income for a single filer and say you owe us this money and that's going to be without any of your adjustments or your deductions or your credits. Thank you for that. I know that's a lot of information for some of us who just simply go to our local brick and mortar and just turn in W-2s. Right. Um, but I do want to kind of jump into maybe a possible few solutions that we can look at and also have you back to kind of talk more about, you know, a lot of us, our community have become small business owners mm -hmm. because of the layoffs, because of the past few years and all the changes. So I do want to have you come back to speak specifically to the small business owners and some things that they should look out for. But for right now, I just want to quickly recap the five things and then have you talk about a couple of the, the solutions or a couple of things that we can do um, to help offset all of these sunsets and these losses <laughs> of credits that we had in the past couple of years. So let me see. You said... The child tax credit was number one. And we need to look for ways to offset. Um, also, the child and dependent. What was number two? Child and dependent care. Child and dependent care. That's for expenses paid for daycare. For daycare. Can mm -hmm. you tell us number three, number four, and number five? Can you just walk us through really quick? Earn, I have it uh, written, number, but you can walk us through. Number three is the earned income credit. Um, there's nothing that uh, you can do um per se to affect your earned income it's based solely right. on how much money you make and number four is the charitable deduction if you are making charitable deductions still keep your receipts because again if you have other deductions um like mortgage interest property taxes um job union dues all that stuff you will add all those together with your charitable contribution to see if you uh need to itemize or just take the standard um but what has sunset is you the ability for you just to take the standard and take your charitable contribution and add it on top of the standard that has that is what sunset in 2021 the ability to just take that one deduction and add it on top of the standard deduction and last is uh severance um for those that um been laid off or lost their job during the pandemic you receive severance income, just know that that income is taxable. It's not tax-free money. You have to pay taxes on it. Right. So thank you for those five tips. I know there are more that you could probably discuss. I also know it's, ta it's tax season, so I want to be sensitive of your time. So can you just walk us through two, maybe one, two, or three <laughs> um, recommendations that you may have for someone looking to maximize their contributions for tax season 2020 tax year 2022 oh so first let me just say this i tell this to people um um a refund is money you get back from the government that you um shouldn't have sent 
based on your income and your deduction. So, so um, when you do things to maximize your refund, it's going to reduce um, what you get um, on a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly basis, however you get paid in your paycheck. Um, so if you, if you're the type of person that would like to get a refund at the end of the year, there's things you could do to increase it. If you are one that wants your money throughout the year in real time, <laughs> when you earn it, you want it, then a small refund is not bad. Cause like I said, you're just getting money back that you shouldn't have sent with zero interest. My dad. <laughs> So, but if you want to, you know, being that these things happen to reduce your refund, if you want to um, increase your um, refund, there's some things you could do. One, you, a lot of y'all are probably already doing it. If you have um, a 401k or some type of retirement account at your job available, increase your deductions in those accounts. When you increase those, they, they're called uh, tax de deferred accounts. So what happens is whatever money that you put into these retirement accounts does not count towards your taxable income. So if you make 10,000 in a year, I'm just throwing out numbers and you um, contribute say 3,000 to a tax deferred retirement account, that 3,000 is subtracted from the 10,000 and you're taxed on the 7,000, not the 10,000 you made. So that's one thing you could do, um, increase um, contributions to a retirement account. Two, if um, you have a health savings account available at your job, you can increase contribution to that. A health savings account is um, an account you could put money in tax deferred to handle medical expenses, co-pays, uh, whatever out-of-pocket expenses you may have, um, medical expenses, you could deduct prescription drugs. You, you could... Uh, you know, when you make these contributions, it's usually like you make them, they give you a card, there's a whatever you contributed is on a card. And when you go to the doctor, you could pay your co-pays. But same example, if you make $10,000 in a year and you take 3000 and contribute it to a health savings account, that 3000 subtracted from the 10000 and your taxable income is the 7000 same as the retirement account. I do have a question before you move on. I know you mentioned, especially with the 401k IRA situation, that most people are probably doing it. But for those people who have not done it, but can still do it, like, can they still do it now and affect um, the 2022 tax season? I believe there's a cutoff date in 2023 that will help lower your tax liability in 2022. The cutoff date is April... 18th that you can contribute this year into uh like ira accounts to um reduce your uh taxable income for tax year 2022 so the so deadline listen is to that. so listen right. to that guys like if you think you're going to have a higher tax liability now but you don't have a 401k or ira start one it's better to take that money and put it for your future self than to just go ahead and have to, you know, give it to the government. And said, I'm going to leave Cedric's information in the description box and a link to set up a consultation with him um, and more about that at the end. But I just wanted to underscore that it's not too late to invest in 20 for the 2022 tax season. Tax season right. <laughs> so go ahead. All right. Um, I'm going to go through two more. Same thing. I, okay. So I started with the retirement accounts, health savings accounts, same concept. Also, um, people with children, you could start saving um, for college for your kids with tax deferred college savings account, the uh, 529 plans and stuff like that. But you could save for your children's college education on a tax deferred basis. And it's the same principle as the health savings account. And, um, and the retirement accounts, whatever money you contribute throughout the year to these college savings account is tax deferred. So it's subtracted from your income. Again, the same example, you make 10,000 They say if you put 10,000 in the college savings account, they subtract 3,000 and your taxable income is 7,000. So it's the same concept <laughs> with all three of those, they different accounts, but it's the same concept. Um, and lastly, I'm gonna touch on this briefly, like, um, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of people started businesses and was running businesses out their home, 
whether you know if you own your home or apartment if you are doing if you have a business um where you're buying or selling a, a product or service please set up an llc um with your home address um you know it's critical that you do that if you don't there's money you leaving on the table um if you're operating a business is not set up officially so i mean i could go into that um if you want information more information on that i can provide consultation on how to set up your business um um you know i can if you have a business set up i could provide consultation on you know how to maximize um you know offsetting your in your income with your llc that you set up in home yeah so Thank you, Cedric. I will definitely add your information. Like I said, in the description box below, feel free to set up a consultation. Cedric is offering um, consultation for personal as well, personal individual family, as well as business returns. Um, and the great thing is after your consultation, if you decide, decide <laughs> if you decide and desire to <laughs> hire um, its tax season for your returns this year, um, a huge portion, a, a good percentage of the consultation fee will be um, deducted from the total total bill for your returns. And Cedric's fees are so affordable because, like I said, he's here for the community. He's here mm -hmm. for the culture. Yes. And so based on what your needs are, he will supp supply you the pricing. You can... Um, set up the consultation through a link that will be included. Now, what you will do is literally just book the consultation that you are interested in the consultation. Cedric will then text you back and work out of the most convenient time. Um, it's tax season. You know, his schedule is, it's literally tax season. <laughs> his schedule is crazy. And so he is making the time for the community to help with consultations as well as help people who need uh, um, a tax, someone to do their taxes for them. And he's the expert, like I said, been doing it for over 17 years. You can book through him through the link below. He will get your text number or your cell number, and or you can leave your email address and he will email you. You'll work out convenient times set up the meeting um and yeah get get all the gems that we just don't know by doing taxes ourselves or going just to a, a a random tax preparer who's just there you know they don't necessarily care about your best interest they care about turnover they care about you know getting as much and as many clients in the door um paid clients and out as possible so with that being said, I think we covered everything. Um, we covered the reasons why your tax returns may be lower this year. We covered some tax and solutions, which I know Cedric has more gems <laughs> um, that he could share with you on how to offset your taxes moving forward, as well as for 2022. Um, and we also covered um the fact that he's available for consultations as well as he does have appointments available to uh, be, become your personal tax preparer and am I, is that your title tax preparer <laughs> right <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so yeah so once again Cedric thank you so much for your time again we're going to have you back talking up specifically to small business owners I think that may be more of a live conversation where people can ask live questions um, based on your time. You know, like I said, this just popped up in my head today. So we'll work out the time. But again, check the um, description box for all the information regarding today's conversation with Cedric from It's Tax Season LLC in New York. And we'll be back with some more gems. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel hit the like button. It helps get this message out to more people and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the next time Cedric is back with us. Until then, thank you, Cedric. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>